Good afternoon everyone. We are nice and snug up here. I hope this stage don't give way because this is a huge show, huge night of boxing, November the 2nd. One of our favourite arenas, Manchester Arena, live on Sky Sports in the UK, The Zone in America. And firstly, I want to genuinely say thank you to the fighters to come in here today for the press conference because I know We've just got just under seven weeks to go, so you guys are in camp. Particularly thank you to Christine from coming over from Athens and Brian from America. Thank you to Katie to coming over from Connecticut. Um, thanks for JB for coming up to London and Felix and thanks to Crawler for walking here. Um, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's a special night of boxing. Adam Smith actually said to me, on the way up. You know, this is probably three of the nicest people in boxing, Joshua Guazzi, Anthony Groller and Katie Taylor. And they are an honor to represent. Three very different fights for those three on the card. Katie Taylor, of course, now one of the biggest stars in world boxing, unified, lightweight champion of the world. We'll remember that great fight against Delphine Pierce soon at Madison Square Garden on June the 1st. Mike Goodall, I mean, not only have you got the Coca-Cola ringtone on your phone, <laughs> that's true, that's why I knew it was you. A great night at Madison Square Garden on June the 1st when she became the unified lightweight champion of the world against Delphine Pearson. I think every moment now for Katie Taylor is about creating history and legacy for herself. Now she moves up a weight class to try and become a two division world champion against the WBO super lightweight champion of the world in Christine, Christina Leonardo too. I think one of the toughest tests for her today, Christina has been fantastic in her recent fights, a very proud champion, has a huge following in Greece as well, and this is a very, very dangerous fight. For Anthony Crawler, whose opponent will be announced this week, this is the last dance, we can definitely say that Anthony, can't we? Yeah, the last this time. is the last one, and Manchester has been incredible to Anthony Crawler, and Anthony Crawler has been incredible to Manchester. When you look back at what this young man has achieved in his career, and when you think of those nights in the arena, John Murray, Darlis Perez won the draw that he was robbed in. Darlis Perez two knocks him out to win the WBA world title. Barroso, the guy who stopped Kevin Mitchell, no one gave Crawler a chance in that fight. Crawler knocks him out at the arena. Jorge Linares one, Jorge Linares two, Ricky Burns, that's seven times at the arena he's given us incredible nights and incredible fights. And it will be a very emotional moment for him and the city when he takes that final ring walk on November the 2nd. Joshua Boazzi, just business. Well, this time it is just business because now we take that inevitable step from those learning fights to the real stage, to the real fights. We have confirmation from the WBA, this is an official eliminator for the world title against Blake Caparello. This is what we talked about between the level he's been boxing at the moment and the Dimitri Bivols and the better BS this world. This is right in the middle to show us exactly where he is. Caparello on a great run of wins, extremely tough, clever southpaw, only ever lost to the very, very elite of the division going the distance many times with some very big, big punches. This is a great test for Joshua Boazzi on November the 2nd. And one of my favourite fights of the night is Felix Cash against Jack Cullen because these two young middleweights are outstanding young fighters. Felix Cash, long time, has been thought of by the team as one of the rising stars of the middleweight division, captured the Commonwealth title, the WBC International Silver title, had a few delays recently with injury, but this is a perfect fight to show us how good he is against Jack Cullen, who showed us how good he is against John Harding Jr. when he defended his English middleweight title. Crazy support from Little Lever. There are going to be hundreds, probably thousands coming. In fact, if you are a burglar, Little Lever is a great place to visit on November 2nd because there will be no one there. And uh, that's really going to show us who's going to go on and dominate domestically in the middleweight division because that's a great, great fight. Loads more on the card as well. Also, Kez Ashfag. Gamal Yafai, plenty of other talent on the card beneath that as well. And before we hear from the fighters, I'm going to pass to Adam Smith, head of boxing from Sky Sports. Thanks, Eddie. Well, we're right in the uh, in the middle now of a very, very powerful period for boxing, I think, not only in this country, but around the world. But the schedule we've got coming up for the autumn and winter 
is probably the best I've seen in maybe five, six years. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. This particular show, we've talked long and, uh, and hard about Eddie and I over a number of weeks, and it has actually come together. It is fantastic. I'm so excited to have Katie and Joshua and Anthony in Manchester on November the 2nd at prime time on Sky Sports, and it's fantastic for our customers. I agree with you, Eddie. I think the, the, the clash between Jack Cullen and Felix Cash uh, is, is a terrific one, really, to, to kickstart what will be a fantastic night. And I think all of these cards now that we're, we're going to, you know, we look at Newcastle on October the 19th, which is absolutely stacked. The Sky Box Office cards, the Lomachenko one, October the 26th, when we're back in London, are brilliant. It's great value for money, it's great fights, and they're real fights being made. This is a special one, though, for us to have Katie Taylor fighting back on UK time zone, on Irish time zone, 10 o'clock at night. It's absolutely brilliant. We've covered her, obviously, from the very beginning of her professional career. She was the best amateur that's ever lived, and I was so excited at the beginning of that journey, that professional journey, when uh, Eddie signed her and it's just getting better and better each and every fight. She's a wonderful ambassador outside of the ring, and she's obviously uh, dynamite inside it. Look at what she's achieved so far. The unified lightweight champion, now she moves up in weight. Very, very tough test against Christina Linalatu. She's a, a great fighter in her own right, and I think the weight will be really interesting to see if Katie can solve that. I know she's been training hard out in Connecticut, as always, but it's brilliant for us to be showing Katie uh, as the leading woman fighter on the planet and as we show a lot more of uh, women's sports on Sky. So it's brilliant to have Katie here uh, at 10 o'clock at night on the UK. To add to that, Joshua Bawatsi, who I think is uh, probably the rising star uh, of all of our prospects. I think this is the right fight at the right time for, uh, for JB. Uh, he continues to impress us. I thought the, the way he finished last time out it was, was, was brilliant and I think that he'll be ready for a, a world title fight what within 12, 18 months whenever you know the team believe it's the right time to go with that I think Joshua Boazzi will not only become a world champion I think he'll become a world champion for a long time I think he's that good and I think he's such a nice guy as Eddie said the three of them are so nice aren't they Katie, Joshua and this one Anthony Crawler big soft spot for Anthony Crawler as everyone does in Manchester what a ride we've had with him as Eddie's listed all the great nights the ups the downs the the, the, the real problems that he's had to have to endure and come through and, and that draw and then winning the world title and going on to fight Linares 24 rounds, having that experience even against Lomachenko and then joining our team for the Lomachenko-Campbell fight. And I'll tell you what, Anthony Crawler did a very, very good job that night. So I'm telling you, Anthony, this is your last fight. This is it. This is the swan song. Come out and support him because after that, he can come and do some more work. My side of the fence, my side of the ring. He's an absolute pleasure to have covered and uh, he will have a great career in the future, I have no doubt. So yeah, really excited about it. Back in Manchester at the, uh, the Great Arena, bring on November the 2nd, Eddie. Thank you, Adam. Talk about that Commonwealth middleweight title. Jack Cullen, English middleweight champion. Um, welcome back. Great win for you last time out. Um, big, big show for you this time. I know you're going to have huge support and a big opportunity and a very, very tough fight with Felix Cash. Yeah, it's a big opportunity on our own. Um, this, is the, this is the fight I want against Felix Cash, the Commonwealth title. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Training is going well, everything's banged on. Obviously, Felix Cash is a tough, strong lad, so I'm expecting a good fight. The support last time for you was, was unbelievable, and that was obviously a, a much smaller fight. Expecting just a crazy atmosphere at Manchester Arena. Yeah, that. probably tw twice as much as that. Um, my fans are pretty mad, to be honest, they're all fucked up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be good, it's going to be a good show. And finally, the challenge of Phoenix Cash, obviously, I think for both of you, the toughest fights of your career so yeah. far. I mean, this fight really worthy of, I know it's a Commonwealth title, but worthy of a British middleweight title fight as well. And should tell exactly who's going to go on and rule the domestic division. Yeah, definitely. I mean, these are the fights I want, so I'm looking forward to it. Felix, been a little bit of a frustrating period, but straight into a big fight for you. I know you want to get out there and start stamping your footprint on the division, and a big fight for you to do so. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, it's, it's it's part of fight for me to, to, to come back and um, show everyone what you know. I've been quiet and ain't seen me for a bit, but you know, this fighter, it's, it's, I'm gonna show everyone how good I am. And um, you know, he's tall, he's 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 awkward, but I do believe you know he, he he's never been in with a man like me, and you know, a fighter like me in, in my in my, my caliber. You know, um, no disrespect to him, he's been trim before, and um, so you know, and I'm, I'm planning on doing the same again. So. You know, he's, he's a decent fighter, but you know, there's levels of boxing, and, and I believe I'm at a level of the bottom. 
how much motivation is it in the gym going every day now and you know, you've got a real fight, you're going to almost away territory, really, you can have a lot of support there. Just give you that extra spring and a step, step knowing that things are getting real now. Yeah, it's always been real, isn't it? Every fight you get into, you, you know, it don't matter if, if you know, you, you, you're a big massive favourite to win, it's, it's the same mentality, it's win at all costs, and um, that's what I intend to do, it's, um, it's boxing, isn't it? And um, I've been fighting since, since I was a child, so, you know, it's, 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 it's nothing new to me, you know, it don't matter what stage it is, how many people he's got, he's got coming to support him, it's only going to be me and him in that ropes, in, in between them four ropes, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna show them that you know that there's levels. Thanks, Felix Jack Commonwealth middleweight title. Um, Adam touched on what we think is the the future of not just world boxing and the division, but also a huge part of the Sky Sports boxing future. Joshua Boatsy, JB. This is again we're talking about getting their teeth into fights. Now this is getting serious. I know every fight for you is extremely serious. But this now is a, a really good step up for you as you move up those world rankings. Official eliminator for the world title to cement your place in those world rankings against a very tough opponent in Blake Caparello. Yeah, for sure. Andy. Um, first of all, good afternoon to everyone. Um, like you said, every fight is important to me. Um, I, I don't take them lightly. Um, I concentrate and I think about it over and over and over, hours and hours. So um, I'll be doing the same. Um, so come November the second, I'll be in there. I'll be ready, ready to fight and to to just win, man. Um, like Cash said, you have to win at all costs, do anything to win, so that's what I'll be aiming to do. Caparello, extremely durable, so was Ford, you got some good rounds last time out that could prove important to you. You know, 12 rounds here, this could go to the full 12. And are you excited at that prospect as well? We know you're spiteful, we know you like to get people out there, but you've got to think that Caparello is going to, going to hang in there with you. Yeah, I think um, he's going to try and hang in there as well. Um, he'll believe in his punching power as well. Um, He's been on a long winning run, but two men in that ring, man. Um, uh, when I'm in there, I'm, I'm there to win. Like you said, uh, and a lot of people say outside the ring, very relaxed, cool, cool calm guy, but in there, you have to be savage, and I, I'm very good at being that. So when I get in there, I'll do what I have to do to win. And finally, Manchester to close the year. You've had the Copper Box, you've had Madison Square Garden, you've had the O2 Arena, and, and now Manchester to finish it off. Great fight fans up here. For sure, man. I just hope they embrace me and they welcome me and I'm looking forward to it. Look forward to that. Joshua Boatsy against Blake Caparello, official eliminator for the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. We're going to go to the champion first. Um, and Brian Cohen. Brian, welcome. Um, it's great to have you here. We really appreciate you making the trip over. Thank you. Um, big fight. Big fight for your young charge. And she seems very focused, very confident. We know these negotiations have gone on for a while and you know, you've stood your ground and this is now the big stage, massive opportunity and we know you're very confident as a team. We are very confident. Um, you know, I wrote down a bunch of little quirky things to say and things like that, you know, on the airplane. But you know, at this point, I, I really can't say that and because, you know, I've been in women's boxing for 10 years. I've been managing women for, for 10 years and uh, 26 world champions I have. All right. When you see your fighter get off an airplane in tears, you know, and I know it's really lighthearted in here, I'm sorry to bring the, the energy down, she's not happy. She's the champion, and like you said, we, we were negotiating for, for, for quite some time, and she just feels as the champion that she should have a rematch clause in the contract. You know, um... You that worried about losing already, I mean? Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you'll be, you, no, don't, don't be cute. Well, no, be cute. You don't, you don't gotta be cute. No, because what don't, do you think? You gonna win the fight or not? I mean, she's coming to win the fight, but you don't gotta be cute, Eddie. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm not the one. Is that? No, I'm just saying. I'm not. Don't, 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 don't try to be quirky. I'm not trying to be quirky. I'm saying you wanted a rematch, but talk about your. Our question is: Is this is a big opportunity for your fight? You believe she's going to win the fight? You have a rematch clause if she if she beats her, but not if she beats her, right? Are you worried? Uh, no. So why don't you agree? We're not worried. We got one. So why don't you show some heart? <laughs> <laughs> so show some heart. Put the rematch clause. I, I'll ask you again. Are you looking forward to the fight? You believe you're. Fighter is going to win this fight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks for coming. Yeah, no problem. Cheers. Yeah, cheers to you. Christine, yeah. welcome. I know you believe you're going to win this fight. Um, thank you for coming. I know it was a long way. Um, 
A tough fight. Katie Taylor is a great fighter, so are you. We expect a tough fight uh, in Manchester on November 2nd. I can speak English very well, but I can express myself better in uh, Greek. Sure. So, Greece is going to translate for me. It's going to be a very good match. I believe that. 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 I believe this match for a long time, but under different conditions and circumstances. But at any rate, at any rate, I'll go ahead with this match. <coughs> Both Katie and I come from lower categories and I, I managed to enter the 140 because I didn't have the chance to participate and challenge for titles. Uh, I always uh, boxed away from my home. I've always done that in my, in my career. <coughs> and if Katie wants my title, then no, she has to get it off me. Christine, great time for women's boxing great. right now. I mean, we had a fight at the weekend, Amanda Serrano against Heather Hardy, obviously Katie versus Persoon, Clarissa Shields. We have Jessica McCaskill as well, who has two belts. I, your, I know, I know. Well, you will have her. You know, I mean, I she's, a, she's a great fighter. We, we have her fighting on October the 12th in Chicago. She defends her title. Mm -hmm. But women's boxing right now completely changed. So many opportunities. I'm, ho I'm so happy about that. And uh, uh, these fights must happen. I'm thinking that a long time ago because, uh, you know, I'm fighting it before. It's so difficult to get the chance, but uh, all these fights, good fights, people need good fights to, to make uh, women boxing grow up. Do you believe you are the best at 140 pounds? Obviously, you have Jessica. You have Bustos, who's moving up to fight uh, Cecilia Breakhouse at 147. Do you believe right now you are the best fighter? Of at course 140? I do. Of course I do. And if she believed uh, that she is too, she could give me the chance. Since a long time ago that I'm asking that. Right. So she should give it. If she, if she believed that she could beat me. Um, I don't have uh, any problem. I'm not afraid of losing. I'm not afraid of losing my belt. I'm just getting in the ring and give all my best. And this is what I'm going to do always. So I'm here. Thank you, Christina. Katie, thank you for flying over from America as well. Um, a big chance for you to move up and make history, become a two way world champion, and expected a very, very tough fight. Yeah, that, this is a huge opportunity for me to become a two-way world champion. This is a history maker for me and my, and my country, really. And I'm very, very aware of the challenge that Christina brings. I, I do believe that she is the best with the 140 pounder in the division, and um, I can't wait for a very, very exciting fight. And this is my first time fighting in, in the UK in, in, in a long time, actually. So um, I'm, I, I actually love fighting here in the UK. It, the support I've gotten over the last few years since I've done pro has been absolutely outstanding. So I'm so grateful for that. And uh, this is my first time in the ring as the undisputed lightweight champion as well. It's going to be very, very special. Uh, but this is going to be an absolutely fantastic fight. Um, Christina's a great, great champion, a great fighter. And the people are, again are going to see the best of, uh, of women's boxing. You can tell she's certainly going to absolutely do everything she can to defend her belt. Do you feel that at this stage in your career, when you talk about the potential fights that are out there for you, of course, first you must fight Christine, then you have the rematch with Delphine Pissoon, you've got the fight with Serrano. There's so many mega fights now, and every fight is, is so important to you at this stage. Yeah, I mean, I only take uh, one fight at a time. I have to, um, my focus is completely on, on November 2nd, but there is a huge fight out there for me. You, you mentioned that fight for Serrano, the rematch, uh, Amanda Serrano, those fights are going to happen the next year sometime, I hope. And, it's going to be a huge 12 months for me, but right now my focus is fully on November 2nd and I have to get by, and I'll get past Christina, she brings a lot to the table, she's a very, very strong fighter, I, I, I am very aware of the challenge that, that she brings. We know that you move from super featherweight to what kind of, to lightweight, 
Um, you make lightweight comfortably, so you are going to be undersized in this fight against Christine. Is that going to be part of the challenge in this fight? Yeah, it definitely it brings a, a new challenge, moving up in weight. Um, I, I walk around, I'm maybe 140 pounds, so it's, it's going to be, I'm just going to step on the scales. And, uh, but I have been working very, very hard in the over these last few months. Um, with my, my, my coach Ross, I feel like I'm getting um, a strong reach time, and I feel like on November 2nd, you'll see the best thing. Thank you, Casey. We look forward to a brilliant women's like welterweight world championship champion Christine Bernardo two against Katie Taylor, unified lightweight world champion as well on a huge card. Anthony Crawler, Joshua Boatsy, Felix Cash as well against Jack Cullen, Gamal Yafai, Kez Ashback, plenty more to be announced as well. We're going to have head to head um, with Katie and Christine now and also Jack and Felix. Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew there was some geezer I missed out. Oh, I can't believe it. No, oh, brother. No, I meant that. It's all part of the trick. You know? Good one. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, I'm going to leave you last. I think I'm going to leave you last on the night as well. Anthony Crawler, we've sat here so many times and now this is the last dance. Is it definitely the last dance? Because we talked about it after the Lomachenko fight and yeah. now. You know, we said that you wanted to finish your career at a place that has so many special memories for you. Yeah, it's the last one, and if um, if it wasn't going to be Manchester, then I probably wouldn't have had another one. And you know, gen I genuinely believe that I can compete at world level for you know for another year or two. But I bang on about it, and you've heard me say it again: you stay in boxing too long, it takes more from you than you take from boxing. And I don't want to be that guy, so. Yeah, it'll be tough, it'll be tough walking away and it'll take a bit of getting used to. But um, I'll, I'll stay involved in the sport and, you know, deal with it the best I can. But um, now I'm just buzzing to be back in the gym, the team, you know, really missed that. I've, I've always been ticking over, even though, like I say, I enjoyed myself over the summer, I was still doing little bits in the gym. So, in a way, the break might have done me good. And um, November the 2nd, yeah, so back to where it all started and the arena, that's, you know, got so many special memories for me. Sitting there getting lots of uh, memories flowing back, talking about when you'd say about headlining at the arena, it's a dream come true. You know, you ended up doing it, what, seven times against the very best lightweights in the world. Obviously, last time out against Lomachenko, your career has taken you to places that I'm sure you never expected it to. It's going to be a, an emotional moment when you walk out that final time on November 2nd. Of course, like the boxing has been good to me. It's taken me to some very special places and made life a little bit easier. For um, obviously myself and my family, so you know I'll always be thankful of that. But like I said, you can't stay in it too long, and I've got to be sensible. Um, yeah, on the night it could it could be emotional, but I can't I can't fight on emotions. You know when I'm telling the kid in the gym, you can never fight on emotions. So I certainly can't do it myself, and I've just got to go out there, do a job. You know what? Get emotional, get emotional after it, or something like that. I don't know, but um, when I'm in the changing rooms, but don't. So I'm there to do a job on November the 2nd and, and you know, that's what I plan on doing it. And obviously we're selecting that opponent. You want a real fight? I mean, you don't want a, an yeah, eight round fight, will you, unless you do? Of course. You mind, but I know you want to go out with a real fight and you want to, most importantly, leave the sport with a victory. Of course, yeah, you know, the win's so important, but if it was just a fight where, you know, six way around it, it'd just be for the ego and it'd be for the wrong reasons, but you know, there's so many people asking me about fighting in Manchester one more time, so if people are going to, you know, spend their, uh, their money, then it should be a real fight. And um, it's a great card, listen, it's a great card to be on. You, you know, you've mentioned it, Felix and Jack, that's a belter. Joshua, he's like, say, one of the highest prospects in world boxing. I and mean, Katie, obviously, everyone knows about Katie. It's, um, it's going to be a great night in Manchester, and I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. And, um, yeah, it's, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss these nights, you know, after after November the second. But um, I'm very thankful to be here one last time. Thank you, Anthony. And November the second will be an emotional night for all of us, and the incredible nights that Anthony's given us at the arena. We will see you there. We're gonna have photos up here now, and everyone available for one on ones. Thank you.